Now, cast your minds back to the BBC and to a comedy trio with a unique line in Trandons, Funky Gibbons and Patriotic Clothing, whose weekly mission was to boldly save the world from threats like outside Dougals and Kitten Kong and to protect such endangered species as the British beef eater. All right, now look, who we're after is someone who bears a grudge against beef eaters, right? Bulls, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Bulls! Bulls, beef, beef, beef eaters. No, no bull likes being eaten. Right? Right. Right. What? Bulls are stealing the beef, so there'll be no more beef eaters, no more bulls will have to be eaten. Rubbish. All right, poultry farmers, because if there's no more beef, then the beef eaters will have to eat something else, and they'll probably have to go on to chickens, and that's where the poultry farmers cash in. Yeah, and the beef eaters have to change the name to chicken eaters. Right. <laughs> Ceremonial chicken eaters. Does lack a little dignity, doesn't it? Chicken eaters. Chicken eater! You get used to it in time. Chicken eaters! Chicken eaters! Absolute nonsense. Look, just wait till I finish feeding the computer. <laughs> what was that you gave it? What was it? It was a beef sandwich, wasn't it? It was beef! Beef! It was beef! Beef! beef. <laughs> Have you scientists no soul? There are millions of little beef eaters starving out there and you give a beef sandwich to a rotten machine. Please welcome our beef lover, Tim Brooke Taylor. Those when it comes to ornithology, our next guest holds the cards. He can but, spot a packet of biscuits from about 200 yards. To say he's goody goody will provide the proper clue. So please welcome Tim Brooke Taylor with some cheery chat for you. Hi! <laughs> They're awfully good, aren't uh, they? You were dying to join in. I there, was, certainly, you? yeah. Now, how long ago was that clip? That, we that was the very first goodies we ever did, which was 21 years ago, and that child who was appearing there was yes, very worried. Son. My son, yes. <laughs> I want to know whether being expelled from school at the age of five and a half set you on the road that you're on today. Um, there's discussion about this. I say I was expelled at five and a half. My mother says I was asked to leave. Yeah. Uh, we come from a legal family, but I was at a, it was an all-girls school except for myself and Robert. And we behaved very badly. On Thursdays, we used to go and do brownies. <laughs> <laughs> Showed we were regular. No, we did do brownies, and um, we were asked to leave because we behaved very badly, to be honest. No, you can't Simon was good, wasn't he? Simon yes. Fanshawe. I only got half of his telephone number, 909. <laughs> I'll give it to you later. Right. It's on a fact sheet. <laughs> you can't just say you did badly, but anyway, you did badly. You, when did you decide to go into comedy, then? About ten minutes ago. No, um, I was, um, I think it's the old story of when you're in trouble at school, you try and make people laugh because you're, otherwise you're going to get beaten up. And I, I, I sort of professionally was at, was at university and I happened to be with uh, good people. Uh, John Cleese and my fellow goodies and several others who are now very, very famous. Didn't you have a, a magic act that went wrong then in the sort of oh, Tommy you, Cooper You've style? seen research, haven't you? Yes, Briefly. this is a, entirely true. I went to a, a very tough boarding school and it uh, was very frightening. At the age of 13, the youngest boy in this particular section of the school had to do an act. I mean, that's, it's fairly unpleasant. And I did a, a conjuring act and it was, and it's the ace of spades, there's always the nine of diamonds. Mm. I, I sussed then, the best thing was uh, to pretend that that was, and all the rest of the tricks went wrong and it was, uh, it's a very good way out of it actually. The goodies were sort of loosely based on, on you as people, wasn't it? Yes, that's true, yes. Um, I think we all actually, I hated my character. I mean, I really didn't like, he was a fascist right-wing pig. Very patriotic, I'm, I'm very pro the Queen, and I love the country and the church and everything that is good to our nation, but I didn't particularly like that character. But I couldn't have played the bolshy little revolutionary like Bill, not with a name like Timbrook Taylor. No. So we basically took our characters, I was the upper-class twit, Graham was the technocrat, because he was trained as a doctor, he's a doctor, and Bill was, well, you could just take him for yourselves, really. <laughs> it was quite interesting, that, because the, for the first time, you, we had, t I mean, you and, and Tim, uh, no, you are Tim, Graham, and the work, I mean, you looked like straight men. As you say, he trained as a doctor. He looked, yes. Yes, he looked like the Prime Minister, Graham, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he really? did, actually. Yes. Well, not Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher, but, yeah. You know. <laughs> anyway, tell uh, us we about... Were, we didn't look like straight people. We were extremely funny, I thought. Oh, you were funny. Oh, sorry, what yeah. came out of your mouths was funny, and uh, what you did with your bodies was funny, but you looked like straight men. I'm, g I'm on a loser here. I'm getting off this one. Yeah. Tell us about the philanthropist, the play you're in at the moment. <laughs> Glad I got that word out as well. It's not an easy one, is no, it? No, it isn't. Um, for those of you who don't know the philanthropist, it sounds like a Moliere play, or in fact, uh, Christopher Hampton wrote it, who wrote Liaison Dangereuse and great great other works. Um, 
he, he decided that when Moliere wrote plays, he took a miser, he, took, he thought he'd take a really nice person mm -hmm. and see what destruction he did. Now, Edward Fox plays, plays this uh, part brilliantly, I might say. Very good cast, and he is the central character. And so it's really what happens when somebody's terribly nice and how he can screw up everybody's lives. And, so who uh, are you? I'm the other one. No, I'm, the, I'm his mate. I'm his friend. Another Don. At, uh, we're both uh, Dons at um, Oxford. And, um, well, there's love interest, there's everything. What is surprise to people, because if you hear a title, I think it's a rotten title, to be honest, The Philanthropist, you imagine it's going to be some mm. sort of 18th century. In fact, it's a very, very funny play. Its uh, use of words um, is brilliant. I mean, mm. it's one of those things that people say to me, oh, I don't like another the theatre. Well, I see it on television or films, and I, there's a lot of good stuff on films and television. But this is the reason to go to the theatre. There are one, there's a shock in it quite early on, which is a hair-raising shock. But it's the words themselves, and the, mm. um, there's a moment, there's a lovely scene between um, Edward and Sarah Berger, who is, is the sort of girlfriend, and it's one of those moments you can see people going, oh, gosh, that's just like me, oh, and turning to their husband or wife and saying, oh, that's just like you, yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's that recognition laugh. It's a very, very funny play. I know I'm, I'm plugging it, because I want people to come to it, and they are, but it is. When I read it, I thought, why haven't I seen this before? And yeah. then it ran for three years in London in 1970. I am plugging it off. And you're, well, up, you're up here at the moment? I'm here, up there, yes, up I am in Birmingham at the moment at the Alexander, yes, okay. which is Smashing Theatre. We're going to talk in a minute about, uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. I haven't a clue. <laughs> yes. No, do not get the tour dates in as well. We'll talk about, sorry, <laughs> I haven't got a clue in a moment. For the moment, Tim Brooke Taylor. Thank you very much.